And this is us when we went for the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So this is us at Washington, D.C. So many memories here. Yeah. She just really fell into a shell, a really deep shell. I couldn't believe it because this is my little sister. I've seen her grow up. She always had a smile on her face. I mean, a guy could yeah, you get emotional about it because like, you see so many kids that, you know, you, you don't exactly know what's going on. Honestly, I, I didn't know what to do. I was in shock. I just, like, I just gave her her space. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle the situation. That's the first time that's ever really happened to me, you know, as a suicide, like having family members suicidal or having those thoughts come into their minds. Yeah, I, I get emotional um, every time I talk about it. Four years ago, as COVID tipped the world upside down, the weight of its impact initiated Lauren D. Crane's downward spiral. She would shoulder one painful heartache after another. Lauren lost four close relatives, including two to COVID and two of her grandparents. The last straw? losing her grandmother on the same day her Plenty Coup basketball team won a district championship. This, this is a picture of when, she, the, the day she lost her grandma and the day she became a district champ. One of the hardest days of my life, hardest games I've ever played, but also a really big day for me too because we won. I made one point that whole game. I just was too heartbroken. Graduating here from Plenty Coup High School, Lauren's three older brothers realized the difficulty of growing up on Montana's reservations. Along with their parents, they encouraged a transfer Lauren's freshman year to this brand new high school in Lockwood. I felt like a new environment and a new surrounding would help build a character back up and. Make your, make your, see your smile again, you know. Lauren agreed to transfer, but not until her junior year. Though well intended, entering a school five times the size she was used to was not easy. She was like, geez, there's so many kids there. There was somebody in front of me, there was someone behind me, and there was someone on the side of me. She was okay. And then she started falling into her shell again. Worn down physically and emotionally, Lauren finally felt like she'd fallen to the bottom of sadness, like so many others her age, struggling with suicidal thoughts. I'll admit to it. I've, I've struggled with a lot of that. It just felt like, what was like the point of being here? Eventually, Lauren was brave enough to confide in her parents fragile feelings often left unspoken in Native American culture. Taking your life for one thing that's just a forbidden topic. She, she told us that she didn't want to be here anymore. And that scared me. Honestly, I didn't really know what to do. Martha and her husband Lawrence reached out with urgency to Lockwood Activities Director Mike Erickson. We had to start getting the word out. We had to let people know that uh, it's not about her mistakes on the court. It's more of about what's going on from eight to four every day in her life when she goes to sleep, if she's wanting to be awake in the morning and things like that. Lauren is really a tough girl. She doesn't cry much. But when she cries, she cries hard. So we know she needs it. So we're like, it's okay, it's okay. Just go ahead and cry. When her tears dried, the simplicity and joy of flag football emerged and changed everything. You're gonna kind of be the safety here. You're gonna hold on and wait for, so if she can dump it off to you. The Atlanta Falcons are funding startup programs for high school girls across Montana, where team owner Arthur Blank owns a home. Turns out the Falcons happened to be in Lockwood last summer, offering their camp. I really enjoyed them coming out and showing all of us how to play the game properly and like spreading out that 
girls can do more than just what they're told. Wavering between her comfort zone of volleyball or flag football, nice. Lauren was talked into lacing up cleats for Lockwood's first ever team. You know, you could be recognized as being one of the first, one of the, one, one of the ones to be pioneering the sport. And you got an arm, you might, as well, you might as well utilize it. I can't remember what day it was, but she came out and threw the ball and it was like a 40 yard bomb. I mean, she th she'd throw farther than I could, so. <laughs> it's like... Once flag football came, she started getting her courage, her self-esteem, and it just made her happy and felt she just belonged. It just clicked. A lot of kids went to wrestling camp, football camp, volleyball camp. There wasn't a girls flag football, so it's definitely the brand new beginning of something that this state has never seen, and we're actually a part of that, which is pretty cool. It just ended up being because of the girls flag football um, program that she just felt like she was needed and wanted and found her real point in life, honestly. It took a mountain of courage for Lauren to share her vulnerability with family, teachers and coaches, and even more to share it publicly. I'm very thankful that to see everything that everything panned out the right way. You know, as a coach and a teacher, um, to have an impact on her, it's, I mean, it's, it's awesome. So, and, uh, and I'm proud of her and there you go. it's good to see that nice. um, the system's still working. She's sharing her story for young girls and boys and teens and moms and dads to raise awareness and for Native Americans. I feel like it's important that we carry on our traditions onto the next generation. Keep our, our cultural activities, our cultural doings, our native tongue. Sometimes we base our success on the scoreboard behind me. And although her life changed, I think my life and perspective about what my job has been has changed. I, I really feel like what flag football did to her, Lauren did to me in my career. I think in the past, I've recognized situations but have never been sat down by family members and saying we need help, right? It was one that I was directed to, to help. They were searching and I knew I couldn't let him down. And so it became very emotional to me from that point on and uh, will always, always be dear to me. And, and she knows that because I'm, I tell her that, how important this is, not only to her, but also to me. My parents would remind me that I am needed, that I am valued and everything, so. That helped a lot and there's actually stuff worth living for. I hope this story helps parents to recognize and don't be afraid to get help because your child's worth it. <laughs>